Well, I think PSC2, it's still early days, uh, but I would argue that we are actually starting to see change. If you, if you just look at some of the things we've seen here at Money 2020, you've got guys like, uh, like Monzo, you know, they're, they're really flying in the UK. UK is a little bit ahead with their open banking initiatives. Uh, you know, Monzo has just added their, uh, their, their current account. They have a banking license now. They've converted 90% uh, of their customers from their prepaid card to their, um, to their current account. Uh, they're well funded, they're growing, they're adding products pretty much every quarter. Uh, you look at Revolut, Revolut uh, has been presenting here more than once at, at Money 2020. They basically, they're breaking down borders across Europe. They're surpassing 2 million customers. They've just raised 250 million in uh, US dollars in, in funding and they, you know, they're the latest unicorn in the, in the business. Uh, and they're adding like 10,000 customers per week. Uh, and so I would argue that, you know, if you just look at what challenges are doing, you know, I haven't mentioned uh, number 23, you know, they're, they're, they've surpassed a million customers. So, you know, I would say that there is momentum. Um, if you look at, uh, if you, look at uh, you know, some of the, the tech giants, you know, Google, uh, Facebook, Amazon, you know, these guys also are, are beginning to show momentum. Uh, Amazon is looking to, to start a branded current account. Um, Apple Pay is doing really well these days. They're partnering with Goldman Sachs for a credit card. So there's, there are a lot of interesting movements, uh, and I think many of these movements are due to the fact that PC2 is coming, and, and things are probably about to change. With all the things that are happening, you know, banks still have uh, a competitive advantage in terms of you know, being a leading force in the open banking economy, if you like. Banks still have data, you know, consumers' data at scale. They, they don't only have account data, they have financial product data, mortgage data, savings account data, uh, and they have the ability to provide real-time real insights on these. So they, they, have, they have an opportunity to really take the lead in this space, but they need to, they need to act. And, and I think the time to act and the time to be bold is, is now. They do, but I think the first thing you need to do as a bank is really to establish uh, a personal finance data um, innovation platform. You, you need to develop yourself into a platform as a bank. But really, you know, and, and maybe an example of a bank that's doing it relatively well is BBVA. If you look at their uh, open API marketplace. Um, uh, but that's really just a qualifier to stay in business when it comes to the sort of open banking economy. Uh, what, you, what you need to do once you're there is really to start revamping your digital channels. You know, what does it look like when you enter a bank in a mobile device or on the web? Um, and let's face it, if you look at status quo, all banking apps pretty much look the same. You, know? you, you basically check your balance, you move funds from one place to the other, maybe you're paying bills, but that's it. So it's very, very transactional. Whereas you know, most banks really want to be seen as trusted financial advisors. Uh, so that's not the right environment. So you know, if you're a bank and you have to revamp your channel, you can't be looking at what the next bank is doing. You should really be inspired by what best-in-class digital engagement looks like. So when I think about you know, banks changing their, their uh, digital customer user experience, I think about Facebook and I think about Fitbit and I think about you know, these types of players that have done really well in, in uh, digital engagement. So for example, you know, most of us pick up the phone two or three times a day to check our Facebook and we don't even know why we're doing it and wh why should it be any different for banks you think about what are the elements of, of Facebook you know you think about the feed every time you you uh, you open you, you know you open up you see there's something new in the feed every time you, lo you log in there's something different uh, every time you engage with Facebook you know the, the the product becomes richer and better and more personalized so these types of things banks should be thinking about how do we how do we develop that kind of environment in, um, in in banking and maybe the third thing is you know I think there's like bank banks need to have a, 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 like a, a, a mind shift change you know they need to sort of they really need to align themselves with uh, the interests of their customers just as an example uh, earlier this week the the FCA in the UK announced that in 2016 banks earned 2.3 billion pounds in overdraft revenues, and 30% of those were from unarranged uh, overdrafts. Um, and so the bank is earning money, uh, you know, while the customer is losing out. And this is the kind of mind shift change that you need. If you're not aligned with your customer interest, you're earning money on the wrong premise. You know, the FDA 
or the, the FCA shouldn't have to introduce regulation to make this happen. Banks should be realizing this, embracing this, because in the end, that's what's going to make you win in the long run.